Okay, in this video, we're gonna speed run, kind of, the 202012 uh, Calc BC multiple choice. Uh, we're just doing the BC stuff. I think there were like 18 questions that were exclusively BC material at the time. There's one L'Hopital's question that is now an AB question as well. Um, and what I mean by kind of is, I'm actually gonna like show the work and I might explain some of my thought process. If I were really trying to do this just for time, I would just fly through these as fast as I could. Let's take a look. Uh, number two, the position of the particle is given by x of t and y of t. Uh, when is the particle at rest? So we're going to need to know when uh, dx dt, so find the derivative, set it equal to zero. So 3t squared minus 6t, factor that, 3t, quantity t minus 2, set it equal to zero. Either t is zero or two, that's an issue. So we're going to need dy dt. Um, dy dt, again, power rule, 12 minus 6t, set it equal to zero. We get t is two, so two is definitely the time. Now we're going to take two, plug it into both of those positions. Uh, we get 8 minus 12 is negative 4, and then we get 24. Actually, the negative 4 is enough. You could have just chosen A there. Um, so when you plug in, you get negative 4, 12. That's question number 2. That's A. Let's take a look at the next one. Which of the following integrals? So this is just arc length. So arc length is the integral from A to B, square to 1 plus dy dx squared. So we need dy dx. Um, and then we just set it up. So we're going from 1 to 2, square root of 1 plus uh, 1 over x squared. Just look at the answer choices. B is like the uh, distractor or whatever because it doesn't have the radical. Let's take a look at the next one. So here, McLaurin series is given by uh, 0 to infinity, negative x over 4 to the n. What's the value of f of 3? Just plug in 3. Um, so we're doing the sum from 0 to infinity of negative 3 fourths to the n. Geometric, so it's going to be the first term, which is plug in 0, you get 1 over 1 minus the ratio. So 1 over 1 minus negative 3 fourths, which is 1 over... Um, 7 over 4, which is 4 over 7, so C. Let's take a look at the next one. Which of the following converges? Uh, so this is just kind of like testing what you know here. Like, I look at number 1, and I think that's basically e to the x, that with 8 plugged in. It's not actually e to the x, it's actually one uh, e to the x minus 1, I guess, but uh, you don't need to know that. You just need to know that uh, n factorial is going to kill 8 to the n when you go to infinity, so um, you're going to converge there. Uh, number two is like the exact opposite. The nth term test would tell you that this diverges, right? N factorial is going to blow up. Um, so that diverges. And then number three is basically just one over n squared, which is a P series that converges. So one and three converge. My answer would be D. Let's take a look at the next one. Uh, what is the radius of convergence? Uh, this one, so you could do the ratio test on this, but if you look at it closely, it's actually geometric. You can make it the quantity X minus four squared to the N. So we can rewrite it like this, x minus 4 squared over 3 to the n. So r is equal to um, x minus 4 squared over 3. So we need the absolute value of x minus 4 squared over 3 to be less than 1, which means um, you have to be kind of careful here. So we have x minus 4 squared less than 3, but we need x minus 4. We don't need x minus 4 squared. So square root this thing, and we're between negative root 3 and 3, but the question is a radius. So the radius is definitely root 3. Let's take a look at the next one. So let k be a positive constant. Which of the following is a logistic differential equation? All right, so uh, A, like look at the variables. You have t and t. So that's not logistic at all because logistic is like an implicit differential equation. It would have y's in it. Uh, the next one is, again, fake. That's the exponential, right? Uh, separate and integrate. You'll just get like uh, ce to the kt. The next one almost looks logistic, except again, it's a variable issue, right? Those should all be y's. Uh, the next one, so that's out. Uh, the next one mixes y's and t's. That's um, like separable, and I don't know what's happening there. Uh, so then our, our answer is actually just going to be e, so that's it. Let's take a look at the next one. I said we were going fast, so I think we kind of are. Uh, let y equals f of x be a solution. This is Euler's method. Uh, so Euler's method, set up your table like this, x, y, and then dy is uh, f prime of x, y, delta x, or however you want to label that. Sometimes you don't, I don't even label it sometimes because I'm afraid I'll like label it incorrectly. Uh, I'm going to throw in the x value. So uh, our ordered pair is 1, 3, that's given. And then we're going uh, from 1 to 2 with two steps of equal size. So they're each going to be 1 half. So 3 halves, and then 4 halves is 2. Uh, so we got to calculate. So it's going to be delta x is 1 half. Plug in 1 and 3, you get uh, 1 minus 3 is negative 2, so that's going to be negative 1. Add 3 and negative 1 to get 2, then you do 1 half, plug in, you have 3 halves minus 2, which is negative 1 half, so now we have negative 1 fourth. 2 is 
8 fourths minus 1 fourth is 7 fourths. Our answer is C. Let's look at the next one. Uh, so here we have the power series 1 minus x squared over 3 factorial 4, but whatever, 4 over, uh, what am I saying? x to the 4th over 5 factorial minus x to the 6th over 7 factorial dot dot dot. So I look at this immediately and I look for the factorials and I see they're all odd. Um, and that reminds me of sine. So is this somehow related to sine? Like it definitely is. If I just take uh, the series for sine, which is x minus x cubed over three factorial, x to the fourth over five, uh, sorry, x to the fifth over five factorial, x to the seventh over seven factorial, divide everything by x, um, I get the series that I'm given. So I think this is just sine of x over x. You should know sine, cosine, e to the x, one over one minus x. You have to have those memorized. Let's take a look at the next one. So, uh, I look at this one and I'm like, oh, can I just do u substitution? I definitely uh, can't do it on this. And also look at all these answer choices. They all just have natural logs. This is definitely a partial fraction problem. So for partial fractions, we got to um, factor that denominator, which is going to be x plus 2, x plus 1. Then I'm going to set it up. So it's a over x plus 2 plus b over x plus 1 is 5x plus 8 over x plus 2, x plus 1. Now you let x equal negative 2 and you'll solve for a. So if x is negative 2, a is negative 10 plus 8 is negative 2, and then cover up the x plus 2 and plug in negative 2, you just get negative 1. So a is 2. Same thing, uh, let x equal negative 1. Uh, you have negative 5 plus 8 is 3 over covering up x plus 1. You have negative 1 plus 2 is 1, so b is 3. So now we just have to actually do this integral. Uh, a lot of natural logs here, right? You get 2 natural log absolute value of x plus 2 plus 3 natural log absolute value of x plus 1 from 0 to 1. And now we just sub in. You got to remember the natural log of one is um, zero. Actually, I guess you don't really need to remember that on this particular problem because uh, you would just have three natural log of one and then it like just won't impact the problem really. But natural log of one is zero. So we get two natural log of three plus three natural log of two minus the quantity. Uh, you have two natural log of two and then natural log of one is zero. So uh, I see three natural log of two minus two natural log of two. That's just natural log of two. So really we have two natural log of three is the natural log of nine. And then plus uh, the natural log of two. And so that's multiply them. So we get the natural log of 18. The answer here is C. That one requires quite a bit of work actually. Uh, let's look at the next. Power series uh, converges at five, which of the following must be true. So a problem like this, I always like, so we converge here. I always think the center is three. I'm going to draw a picture. So we're at three. We definitely converge at five. So two in that direction. So we will definitely converge two in the other direction. So everywhere between one and five, definitively we converge. Then we have some questions. Like we don't really know what's happening here or here because we're not given more information. And because at endpoints you might converge, you might not converge. We don't really know what's happening here. Um, so now just look at the answer choices. So zero. Uh, it's not in the interval that we're given, but we don't know. It's in that like question mark. So that doesn't need to be true. Um, if you look at B and C, it's like uh, they're kind of pushing you there. But we don't know what's happening at one because that's potentially the other endpoint. So neither of those is definitive. We don't know if we diverge. We don't know if we converge. Two, X equals two is right in the middle of this interval. Definitely we converge there. So D is the answer. Six is again just in that like no man's land that we don't have enough info about. So we wouldn't be able to choose that, but we already chose D, so we should move on because we're not overdoing it. Uh, let F be a differentiable, f I mean, look at this, this is definitely integration by parts. <laughs> um, you can tell it's like the integral of F times sine is like classic. Um, so we're doing integration by parts. And um, so the formula for that is UV minus the integral of V du. So we gotta look because there's this plus here. Um, so. I think you would have to be f of x because uh, I don't know how I'm integrating f of x if I were to choose that as dv. So then dv will be sine of x dx, uh, which means du is f prime of x dx. v is negative cosine of x. So that's a big deal because um, this negative that we have here is the reason that we have plus the integral, right? Like bring make that plus into minus negative and put the negative by cosine. So v is negative cosine. So uh, that means that du must be 4x cubed. So f prime is 4x cubed, which means f of x is x to the fourth, which means our answer is e. I actually think this is uh, one of the harder problems on this thing. I don't know why. I just like the, the negative sign, I guess, is what made me think that. 
Uh, next up, so this one, if I was really just going for it, I would not show a lot of work on this, but, and I'm not going to show a lot of work, but I also wouldn't show the part that I'm about to show. This is an improper integral, so it's possible this diverges, right? Like, we could get infinity. We have to, on open-ended, do this limit as b approaches infinity, so I'm showing it here. I just did a little u substitution there. u is negative x squared, so there's got to be a negative 2 on the inside, so a negative 1 half on the outside. We're going from 1 to b, and then we just kind of set this up, sub in b, sub in 1. I think it's better to write it as 1 over b squared and 1 over e instead of e to the negative b squared and e to the negative first. That's up to you. Um, but if you do write it the way I've written it, you can see if b goes to infinity, that first part clearly goes to 0. So all that we're left with is 1 over 2e. So I think the answer is b. Let's take a look at the next one. So this one is where uh, knowing how polar graphs is a huge advantage. So I look at this and it's like, what is the slope of the tangent at one plus two sine of theta? I'm like, can I get away with not really doing the problem? If I kind of roughly sketch this thing, I know that it basically looks like this, um, which means that the slope at zero is definitely positive. So I can cross out both of those and I can cross out zero. Now I just have to choose between one half and two. From my picture, it kind of looks, and also my picture is bad and I know what the real thing should look like. I think the answer at this point is probably one half. And if I were just risking it, I might be inclined to choose that. But um, when we're doing this, we need to know uh, y, dy d theta and dx d theta. So y is r times sine of theta. So y is this. And then we need to find the derivative. This is a product rule. So first or the second plus second or the first. We need to plug in zero. So you need to remember sine of zero is zero and cosine of zero is one, uh, which means that the you end up with one times one plus uh, zero times one. So you just get one. At that point, I'm thinking because the numerator is one, the answer is like definitively this. But again, you should really like do the problem. So x is our cosine of theta um, product rule. So first order of the second, second derivative of the first. And again, you have to remember sine of zero is zero, cosine of zero is one. So we end up with zero plus one times two, so two. So dy dx is dy d theta over dx d theta. So my suspicion was it was b, and then all of my work also indicated that it was B. I don't know. I mean, like the AP exam is not a time to risk that, but if you're just like doing it for fun, maybe it is a time to risk it. I don't know. Uh, let's look at the next one. For what values of P will both series converge? So uh, the first one's definitely a P series. So uh, one over N to the two P. So I just need that exponent to be greater than one. So I need two P to be greater than one, which means I just need P to be greater than one half. I mean, at that point, you can look at some of the answer choices and cross some things out. Like you cross out A, you could cross out B, uh, you could cr cross out D. Uh, I didn't do that, but you could have. Uh, and then the other one is P over 2 to the N. This is geometric, so we need uh, the absolute value of P over 2 to be less than 1, which means that we need uh, the absolute value of P to be less than 2. At this point, I would start drawing some sign charts. So uh, you need to be between negative 2 and 2. And then also from that first part, you need to be greater than one half. The only place that we've kind of like filled in twice is from one half to two. The answer is C. Uh, but it turned out that like P series part was like enough to really eliminate a lot of things. Uh, let's take a look at the next one. So all these have been non-calculator so far. It's like a bunch of them. This is a L'Hopital's problem. This would be on the AB exam now, or at least would be valid for the AB exam. Let G be continuously differentiable function. Uh, G of one is six. G prime of one is three. What is the limit as x approaches 1, the integral from 1 to x, g of t dt, uh, over g of x minus 6? I mean, I look at that and I think immediately, this is definitely L'Hopital's. I don't know if everyone does, but you run into this kind of problem a lot. So uh, you don't have to do this work. Like, honestly, I would just write equals 0 over 0 and, like, go for it. But on a free response, you would want to write this part, right? The limit of the numerator equals the limit of the denominator equals 0. The limit of the numerator, because the integral from 1 to 1 of anything is just 0, so that's 0 for sure. We're told g of 1 is 6, so 6 minus 6 is 0 for sure. Um, so then uh, using L'Hopital's, I'm just going to say L for the limit is going to be the limit um, as x approaches 1 of g of, so second fundamental theorem, the integral, the derivative of the integral is just the integrand with the upper bound plugged in. So we get g of x divided by g prime of x equals 6. G, g of 1 is given to be 6, and g prime of 1 is given to be 3. So 6 over 3 is 2. Let's take a look at the next one. This is calculator, but uh, if you do enough of these, you'll you'll notice like most of the calculator problems are not actually calculator. There's only like 6 or 7 real calculator problems. Uh, f is a function with derivatives of all orders. 
f of 3 is 2, f prime of 3 is negative 1, f double prime of 3 is 6, f triple prime of 3 is 12. What is the third degree Taylor polynomial um, for f about x equals 3? So if I'm just looking at this, I'm thinking to myself, all right, about x equals 3, that means we should have quantity x minus 3. Uh, so all of these are missing the center. These are not the answer. Uh, the next thing that I'm thinking is uh, Taylor's formula is like nth derivative over n factorial x minus a to the n. Uh, in C, they're just missing the factorials. They just plugged in the values. So missing the factorials, not the answer. So now we're choosing between D and E. Uh, so you just kind of like go through and you notice that they're the same for the first term, the second term, the third term. So uh, that fourth term is, it should be the nth, the third derivative over three factorial, which means uh, we should have 12 over three factorial. Three factorial is six, 12 over six is two. The answer is E, not a bad problem. Uh, let's take a look at the next one. So if the series from one to infinity of a sub n converges and a sub n is greater than zero, which of the following must be true? So I look at these, usually they just kind of play around with the various tests. Like um, a is kind of the ratio test, but the ratio test would tell you that uh, like you'd have to be less than one for this thing to converge. Um, and and uh, that's not the ratio test, so that's not the answer. Uh, the next one, I think what they're doing is saying like, oh, what if you just thought it was geometric? If you just thought it was geometric, this would be the requirement, but like this is not necessarily geometric, so that's not our answer. Uh, the next one I think is like, I'm not really sure. I think the next one they're just saying like, do you think that you can just use the nth term test or misapply the nth term test? So this is not our answer. And then for the next one, just think of like a P series where P is big. So like one over n to the fifth would have worked for A sub n. If I multiply that by n, I would have one over n to the fourth, which also converges. So there's no reason that this needs to be true which means that the answer must be E. Uh, and if you think about it, like if uh, A sub N, uh, the sum of A sub N converges, then N over, nope, A sub N over N is less than A sub N. So you can actually use the direct comparison test on that, but you also don't have to because you eliminated every other possibility. Uh, let's take a look at the absolute last problem that was exclusively BC, and it's a polar question. Uh, figure shows the graphs of the polar curves two cosine three theta and r equals two. What is the sum of the areas of the shaded regions? Okay, so we're basically doing the circle minus the rose curve, right? And the circle is, has a radius of two, so that has an area of pi r squared, so that's four pi, and then minus the rose curve. And in my mind, four pi is like four times three point, let's say 3.15, right? So it's basically 12.6 minus the rose curve. And you can see in the picture, which is basically drawn to scale, uh, the rose curve is not a lot of the circle. So I'm doing all of this because I think at this point, we can eliminate these three answers and then just like randomly choose if we don't know what we're doing. Never give up on polar areas, basically what I'm saying. So at this point, it is a calculator, so I'm just gonna do it. Um, so I graphed two cosine of three theta, and I just found that first zero, right? So the first zero takes me from like, 0 to 0.523 or 524, whatever. I stored the value. So I'm going from 0 to that. That's half of a petal. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to double that. Then I'm going to multiply by 3. So I'm going to have 3 times 2 times polar area is 1 half r squared d theta or whatever. I used x in my integral. Um, so I have 4 pi, the whole circle, minus 3 because there's 3 petals, two because I'm only doing half of a petal and then one half the integral from zero to a of r squared d theta, but I did f1 of x squared dx and I got 9.425. That's the answer. So this is all of the questions that were on 2012 that were exclusively BC material. I had like two or three complaints that were like, why don't you do more BC stuff? So there you go. Uh, I hope this was helpful and good luck.